easy to use. I'm going to show you my configuration um, just so that you'll understand what I've done. Open this up here. Let's just uh, load the config. 180 degree floating. So my setup is just L1 input and L2 input. There are two phase 180 degree floating and all my devices are configured. To get into this you would right click on it and you can actually go, if there's an error code you can interpret that uh, and it'll tell you what it's saying. Um, you want to see that it's working you turn on the flash LEDs that you're communicating with it and another thing that you typically can do is and then if you go to L2 there's the other one um, system setup that's the setup it's L2 floating which gives it a little bit of time to um, to find itself and then and then click on in the uh, transfer switch and then the VE config down here that you can configuration system um, hopefully it'll let me just load this no. board selection let's just go fake target from file and quattro new open so the way that mine is set up here is um, over, everything's overruled by the remote. There's 60 amp AC input current limit for the priority, and a 30 amp um, enables the battery monitor um, and the state of charge 95% at 180, blah, blah, blah. Grid power, none. We don't feed back from DC to grid. It's not allowed, so we don't allow it to do that. AC high connect, low connect. Inverter, 20, 120 volts out. We've got our power assist on, modified sign, uh, which just means pure sign. Um, charger, we've got it set up for absorption voltage 2840, float voltage at 2700, charge currents 90 amps down, absorption times one hour every seven days for one hour. We've got it set up lithium iron phosphate batteries. And then we have to run an assistant to make that work, which is our lithium, our Lynx Ion BMS support. Which, if you look at it, um, so I can just start it here. It just tells us what what it does. So we just go in here, click it through. Um, we have separate contacts so that we're going to use the auxiliary and the temperature sensor instead of the regular voltage and temperature sensor to run the BMS for lithium because it's different than just regular ones. Force to float it in the state of charges at 100 and that's done. And then you would just go here and you would click uh, save settings and then your, if your port selection is open and your COM port's there then at that point all you do is over here it'll be telling you what's going on with it but you just um, send it would be down here somewhere send settings and then you would click it and then it would restart both things and you are good to go so that's how you set up your uh, two-phase split split phase system and you can use VE flash to update the software uh, firmware so you'd go download it from the website. Next, 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 and then you'd put it on uh, and individually install it on each one of your inverters. All right, so we're all buttoned up here. I um, put the two screws on the top, left the two off the bottom. That way I can get into there from that and uh, not have any problems with it. We're all turned off right now. I've got the, um, the incoming all sealed up with uh, fire putty um, not that I'm worried about that at all uh, and the way that we breathe is down here we've placed a in which takes air directly in there and sucks it up while these are working their, their fans will pull the air and then that expels the hot air here which then 
vents out there. And then there's also a hole that we've put into our compartment with a fan, 12 volt fan with a switch that's hooked up that when we flip it on in the middle of the summer when we're in Texas, because down here it gets to like, you know, 115 degrees. We had this down in McAllen, down in the valley, and we were um, running the chargers and it got pretty hot in here. So I put this in and that um, allows us to take the cabin temperature and pump it into here. So the AC air will come in and cool off everything. So we'll be good to go. Um, I am going to put one more out here. We're going to put that in, vent, and that will vent into this compartment so that we can kind of disperse the heat between the two so that we don't end up with a super hot area. So we just need to cut this. And there we have it. That's what we've got. A perfect off-grid system. Endless power. So we'll hook up the photovalic system and everything else and be ready to go. Anything else? I don't think so. All right. So we're all done. It's hooked up. The two legs of grid power, shore power, come in and attach to each of the, the master and the slave of the quattros and then they at that point charge the batteries or invert or power assist depending on what your energy needs are and then they run up to the AC mains here each one is a leg this leg and this leg so black and red and so it auto charges um, and then goes into float mode the one thing that's kind of got me a little confused about the Quattro itself is that it doesn't seem to have a pass-through setting. So I know that on the Multiplus or other ones you can pass the shore directly to the AC load and bypass the charging or I don't know enough about it to be perfectly honest but with my Quattro it doesn't appear that there is a pass-through function. So it seems that float will always remain on when it's not being charged. Which doesn't seem... I don't like that, but I don't know what to do about it. So there's no pass-through function on the Quattro, I'm assuming. Uh, can't find anything about it in any of the documentation uh, so, it seems to be working great. Slept last night with the AC running, and and everything worked wonderfully. So, um, the battery temperature is nominal at 25 degrees Celsius, which is right where it should be. So it's cold outside, so the battery temperatures could be as low as 18 degrees, but they're not. They just Sit at 25. I'm assuming that's that's what you got. So everything looks good. So the last kind of things that we have to hook up here are they have this really cool um, new layout where you can hook up your tanks so that you can see what's going on. You can also um, hook up your generator to start, stop, and run all in there. So we're going to be putting that into the um, the auxiliary uh, switch, relay switch, to auto start itself when we need power when we're off of the grid. So that's really awesome. And um, yeah, this last kind of layout is pretty easy to comprehend what's going on here, which is nice. So we have two AC inputs here on our AC input that are currently drawing 
297 watts, 130, 150 each side, and our AC load, which is pulling 151 watts to obviously the light, the light, and stuff like that. So we're on to the next kind of phase of what we're doing, I guess, and uh, got our firmware updated, version 2.1.1. We're all good. Hooray! So. There you have it. So now we're going to put the aqua hot in, the new aqua hot in, and then fix the generator, and then the bus interior, and then we'll be done in another year or two. There you have it.